Um, welcome everyone to a Dolphin Communication Project Dolphin Lesson. Today we are joined by our director, Dr. Kathleen, and she is joining us, as you can tell, uh, from the field. She is in Roatan, Honduras at the moment um, at the Roatan Institute for Marine Sciences. And she uh, has taken this time out of her research day to have a fun little Q&A. Um, of course, you'll see our connection might be a little bit challenging, um, but we figure it's worth it to try and uh, have this cool interaction. Uh, Nicole and I are monitoring the chat, so you can submit your questions either to Dolphin Communication Project or to everyone. If you want everybody to see them, your choice. Um, remember to submit your questions to the chat because uh, you'll find your microphones are muted. And then this is just the last reminder that we are recording. So if you do not want to be visible, please make sure that your videos stay off. And with that, I will pass it over to Dr. Kathleen. Thank you for joining us. Well. And I don't know if you can see, I'm saying hi, I'm, I've got several. I'm going to go ahead and turn my video off and see if that helps. Okay. And um, so I don't know if you guys can hear me, the, the internet is a little slow, but I have everybody behind me. And what I'm going to do is just turn my video around so I can talk and show you. So that's the back of the whole area. And then there, well, I'm, go, I'm gonna try not to go too fast, but you can see Ronnie and Richie in this pool right here. They are two adult males swimming around right there. That is Ronnie, who I'm following, he's underwater. Swimming around, he and Ronnie and Richie tend to hang together. And then I'm just gonna, um, they're actually, I saw, Ronnie when he was a calf in 2003 for the first time, which is pretty cool. He was born here. And then I'm gonna turn just a little bit over to the spot, this pool. And um, Bailey and Tank are a mom-calf pair. And hopefully they'll come up and they'll say hi. That's Tank right there. You can see him and his mom is off the right hand. So, so I'm going on. You can see him because I'm in the back area. But um, Cal, with that with that preamble, there's there's 18 bottlenose dolphins here, and um, moms and calves, and and males and females, adults uh, and juveniles and calves, and. Uh, their training staff who, who works with them with husbandry behaviors and, and other enrichment behaviors. And um, so you're going to see people moving around in and around um, as I move, and hopefully I don't move too, too much. Um, but do we have any questions, Cal? It might be easier to do it that way. Perfect. Um, so let's start with just a little background. Um, can you tell us a little bit about when you and Dolphin Communication Project began studying this group of dolphins? Sure. Uh, we began, uh, I came down the first time in 2002. Uh, I was invited down to, to, to uh, do a, um, an interview with a program that was being filmed for German television. And then uh, met Terry and Eldon and the Galindo family and um, asked if we could come down and start doing research. And so we started our first field season in, uh, well, September, October, 2003. And so several of the adults here, I met when they were calves and got to know them and we've been following them over the years. And I'm, um, yep, there's, that's uh, Ronnie again, and Richie was out. They're circling around right now. They're waiting for folks to come and, and do some training with them. So, um, are you guys still there? Thank, thank you, yes. <laughs> yes, uh, Kathleen, cool. we have another yep. question kind of in the background of the research that you're doing there this week. Are you using the same methods that you're using um, at Bimini and other field sites for your observations and data collection? 
Yes, actually, we use the mobile video acoustic system, and I've been using that um, here for all of our data collection. So what the way we collect data here in Roatan is exactly the same as the way Cal and Nicole collect data in Bimini. And we try to do a focal follow with um, one individual or a group of individuals. And we um, document them as long as they're in our field of view and then uh, analyze the video afterward. And so Bailey just dove down. I don't know if you can sort of see that right there. She's swimming around. And, oh, and there's Tank following her. And um, so that's our focal follow, uh, all occurrence of whatever they do when we're doing a focal follow. And um, we also here in Roatan collect some other type of data. So we're looking at, at dolphin creativity. So we look to see how many novel behaviors they'll do on request. And then we have some other research that we've been doing with them as well that that is um, using behaviors to identify different physiological parameters like respiration rates and um, similar types of, of uh, mergers between uh, behavior and physiology, which is pretty cool. That's great. Thank so. you. Thank you for all of that. I'm, and if anyone is interested, all of these questions we can kind of keep coming back to, um, but we're going to try and get through as many different questions as we want as we can, excuse me. Um, okay. Kathleen, <laughs> Kathleen um, Nina submitted a, a very thorough uh, in-depth question about maternal care. Um, so okay. kind of, I thought maybe in a, in a dolphin lesson friendly way, can you explain to us a little bit about their level of maternal care in dolphins and maybe why this is, um, why this occurs in this species? Uh, sure, well, um, and, and that's a really good question here because we have uh, five, four, four mother calf pairs. Uh, one, two, three, yep. So we have, yeah, we, for the calves that we have here, we have Tank, as you've been watching here, and, and his mom, Bailey, and we have Sandy and her mom, Tilly, and then we have Rocky and Buzz, who have Maury and Alita as their moms. And so that's a, it's, we're watching a lot of mom-calf behavior this week, especially. And dolphins are long-lived social animals. And I'm trying to follow, the, follow Bailey here as well as you go through. They're long-lived social animals. And they, um, so mom gives all of the care to the calf and she nurses the calf, and, and which is the, the the, where she get the calf will get the milk is sort of on the mom's belly, halfway between the um, dorsal fin and the tail. And the calf also learns a lot of the different behaviors and signals they'll have to learn for their social life from mom. And for the first month or so of life, mom doesn't really let the calf hang out with too many other people. And, um, you know, or sorry, not people, with too many other dolphins. And when the calf gets a little bit older, then the calf can hang out with um, some other dolphins. And that's where alloparental care comes into play where you have other younger females who will tend to babysit the calf at times. Um, but there's the calf stays with mom for about two to three to four years before it'll be weaned and then go into a juvenile social group. And, and um, just as a side note, I've moved back here to observe uh, Stan, Lenka, and Champ because there's another group of people who are coming out to do some action swims with Ronnie and Richie. Awesome. awesome. Thank you, Kathleen. You're welcome. Um, our next question is about the dolphins themselves and whether they have any personalities individual personalities. They do actually, the, the dolphins are very distinct in their personalities. And when the way we define, I'm gonna come over here, that's, and this right here is, uh, that's Lenka. And Lenka is um, a bit bold and, okay. Um, Sorry, there's Lenka and Champ. There's a lot of activity going on right here, right now. Um, but Lenka, and that was Lenka again right there. 
Lenka and Champ and Stan are all young boys and they like to wrestle and tussle with one another. They are um, probably about five to seven years old and um, maybe a little bit older for Champ. He's the older of these, these three boys. Um, and, um, but we see distinct personalities. We see um, the way we define personality is uh, stable behavior patterns um, across different situations and over time. So that's the same as how we would define it in people. And we're seeing that certain dolphins will have distinct behavior patterns, no matter what's going on or who they're interacting with. And so that's how we tell some of the difference between them. And, and you can think about that too, if you have dogs or cats and they have distinct personalities because of the different behaviors that they do or they, that they use. And we've seen some dolphins that are very um, bold and pushy, like Stan here. He's just below me right now. And then we have others that are a little more shy. And, and this week, um, Callie actually has been a little bit more shy. Um, and um, she, she can sometimes be bold, but she's also a bit more shy. So that's just two examples. And we've also found maternal style. So moms will, will rear or raise their calves a little bit different to each other. And that's uh, Stan again right there. This is so cool being able to, to see the actual dolphins as you um, talk about them. Um, cool. Can you tell us a little bit, um, I'm sure you could talk for hours on it, um, but what is it like to work with dolphins and what advice would you give someone wanting to be a marine mammologist in the future? Well, I personally think it's really cool to work with um, with the dolphins and and I say that in that I actually study them I don't I don't work with them um, in terms of I don't ask them to do things I, I pretty much want them to ignore me um, which some of them do and some of them don't the younger dolphins tend to be more interactive and try to get me to play and it's really hard not to accept that invitation um, when I'm observing them but as a scientist I try to um, just observe what they're doing with each other and document their behavior with each other uh, and to see, you know, what their messages mean for each other. And if you, um, being a marine biologist or marine, to study marine mammal behavior, it's, it's not necessarily a, a, a job where you're going to make a lot of money, but you'll have a lot of reward personally in terms of enjoying what you do. Um, it's helpful if you like um, science and you like um, studying animals and, and looking at behavior. And it's also helpful to test it out by maybe getting an internship with an aquarium or a stranding program um, where, wherever you are, because then you can learn a little bit more about some of the skills and the tasks that everybody does um, when they work with animals. And that's the dolphins are watching as one of the trainers um, walks by um, right there. And th so this is Champ right here. And um, so, it, you know, there's a variety of different ways to go about working with um, or studying dolphins. And um, there are, uh, you know, if you want to work specifically with dolphins more the way a trainer does, then you can look at different, different uh, facilities that have them and see about their internship programs. And in fact, here today, um, you can't see her, she's behind me. We have a woman who is um, doing trainer for a day. So she gets to see what it's like and test it out for a day to see um, what kind of things the trainers do each day. That sounds awesome and like really great advice. Thank you, Kathleen. You're welcome. Um, the next question is, do the dolphins ever eat or play with the live fish that swim in and out of those pens? Uh, yes, they do. Um, there are, and actually this week that I'm here, there's a lot of bait fish, um, meaning, uh, you know, small um, snapper or other kinds of fish around. And I'm not in a spot where I can show that to you, but I've seen some of them in and around. And that's Stan right there. I'm walking down just a little bit, to give the, the space for the other program going on. And um, there's, there's actually, um, some of the dolphins will go and, and uh, eat those fish some of the dolphins will play with those fish. Uh, Tilly is a really good hunter and she likes to catch the fish and then she'll either give them to Sandy or share them with other dolphins. And um, 
tank also likes to try to find small octopus in the little coral reefs in the, within the um, facility and play with them. Tilly does the same. She actually had an octopus over her head one day that brought it up to the trainers, which is pretty funny. Um, and we've I've seen them chasing the different fish, um, swimming around with them and, and um, playing with a variety of different uh, objects in their environment as well. Excellent. And anyone who's interested in learning more about object play, since Dr. Kathleen offered that nice segue, um, we have <laughs> done a research project on object play. Um, so you can get that uh, research paper from our website um, or email us and we can send you a copy. Um, Kathleen, our, our next question, we've heard that some of these dolphins go out into the open water at times as part of programs. Mm -hmm. Do they ever come into contact with wild dolphins on or around the reef? They do. And, and um, actually, if I'm, I'm pointing to the corner of this actual bath um, air enclosure, and there's a gate there, and that's where the dolphins will go out, and there's a boat over there that they'll follow, and they're, they'll go out in pairs, and they'll, they'll, um, they'll uh, follow the boat and the trainers, and, and right off the reef, if I turn the camera a little bit, you can see there's some trainers there, and then there's Bailey's Key, and on the other side of that is the reef, and the dolphins, that's where they go and do a dive, and um, at least half of the dolphins are trained and they follow the boat, they go out and do the dive and then they come back in. And, and depending on who the dolphins are, so depending on their personality, sometimes the dolphins, usually the older males, will um, go and, and check out the other dolphins and then come back. And sometimes if the other dolphins come in and check out the divers, the, um, the dolphins, the, the dolphins from RIMS here, will actually go and hang out with their trainer and, and they, I, what I learned recently is it's almost like they want their trainer not to interact with the wild dolphins, but they don't care if the, the divers, the guests and visitors do that. Um, and then there are a couple of other dolphins who, if they see wild dolphins, they're like, nope, sorry, out of here. And they swim back in and they hang out by the gate waiting to come back into the enclosure. Great, thank you. Um, yeah. Now, Kathleen, if you could ask the dolphins anything and get an answer, what would you ask them? Um, gosh, I don't, I've never been asked that question. Um, I think I would like to know, um, I'd like to know what kind of signals that they use regularly. I mean, I know what signals they use, but I'd like to know from their perspective what those signals mean. Like, does, does, does a whistle, does a signature whistle actually mean a contact call to them? And, you know, do, do they have other whistles that mean other things? You know, is there, is there a way for us to have, there's Champ, is there a way for us to exchange information more than just me observing what's going on? Um, so I don't think I'd ask them what they think of us though. I, I don't think I'd want to know that. <laughs> Don't ask a question if you don't want to hear the answer. <laughs> right, right. And this um, is Stan again. Hello, Stan. Uh, Mike is wondering if these dolphins are kept here year round and how much, um, he called it free swim, do they get? So I'm not sure if that's referring to those, those trips um, out to the reef. Um, well, yes, this is, this is these dolphins home. As I said, there are 18 dolphins here and um, 15 of them were born here, um, all of the younger individuals and uh, many of the adults now as well. And um, this is their home, they're here year round. Uh, and um, they, uh, if you can see, you have these smaller areas in the back. These are for training, for husbandry and research. We do a lot of our create study research back here. But if I stand up and you see, I think you can see the main lagoon in the background area there. And that is roughly, you can't see all of it, but I'm walking a little. That is um, roughly the size surface area of three football fields. And that is either um, American football or um, European football. So football or soccer. And um, the every evening, everybody's 
let out, all 18 are out in that area together. And they are out there together usually until the morning. And I do my, for my, my data collection. I'm, and we're watching Bailey and Tank again here. My data collection session is um, usually I'm in the water between 6.30 and 7 in the morning for 35 to 50 minutes um, of recording them. So, and this is before they've had breakfast. Well, breakfast from the trainers. They may have had other stuff too, um, other fish in there. And so I'm observing the whole group together. And it's whoever wants to come over and I get to observe them. And this is, let me see, this I believe is, that's Tilly. And this is Sandy, her one and a half year old daughter. So 2019, nope, she's two and a half now. Sorry, I was doing my math wrong. So, so I'm, we're gonna watch Tilly and Sandy for a little bit here. That's excellent. And I, and I think uh, we all get a pass on losing track of 2020. Um, <laughs> and yes. whether or not that really existed. Um, as a quick yep. follow-up to that question about, about their use of space there, and then um, huh? maybe we'll have time for, for one more after that. Um, what happens sure. if a hurricane is approaching the area? Well, um, the, if the hurricane is approaching, the dolphins pretty much stay here, they're okay. Um, when they, when in during Hurricane Mitch, which was, I think 2000, it was before, it was 1995. And then um, Hurricane Katrina didn't come this way, but Hurricane Mitch, I think was the last really heavy hurricane. Um, the animals, they pulled the animals and brought them inland into some pool areas for protection. Uh, not all of the animals, because um, they had their, the, the facility here was set up a little differently. So after that hurricane is where they expanded this area by Bailey's Key and use this area now. And it's fairly well protected. It's inside the reef. It's on the other side, you know, it's got the island all um, to the east side of it. And so um, there's a big area here for them. They'll, they'll, you can see the platforms in the background with the, the coverings. Those coverings will come off and the platforms will be um, moored and tied to the dock in that area. And so um, we, this is, Pretty much, we don't know what dolphins do in the wild in a hurricane, um, and nobody's going to be out here during a hurricane. Um, but if it's a minor one, they're going to stay here and be prepared because they have enough space to to weather that. Very cool. Thank you. <clears throat> and one of our final questions, or perhaps the last one. Um, Rosali is wondering what sorts of social hierarchies or alliances you've seen with the dolphins there. Well, as, as you've taught me, Nicole, um, I'm, I'm cautious about using the term alliance because I'm not necessarily sure that we have alliances here in the way it's identified technically, uh, scientifically. Um, and this is Tilly again right here. Um, but we have seen, for example, that Ronnie and Richie associate with one another. Uh, and so they're adult males. And French, sometimes he's the, uh, the third adult male. Sometimes he hangs out with them and sometimes not so much. Um, and we're seeing what we think is the development of, of a strong association between Lenka and Stan, or maybe Champ and Lenka. Um, it fluctuates a little bit because they, are, they were juveniles and uh, when they started hanging out together. And then as they're being sub-adults, they're sort of developing that association. And we see this, so we see similar patterns. Oh, thank you, Tilly. Woohoo! And then we see the adult females hanging out more with one another once they have their calves, which is pretty cool. And that's very similar to what we see at Bimini. There we go, Tilly. Thank you. So... The program out in the main lagoon has been wrapping up so that the dolphins know that their trainers are going to probably be coming back around here. So I'm going to, I think we're going to have to wrap this up soon. Um, if there's maybe one more short question, I can take that and then we can, we can wrap it. Well, I, I think that's a, a perfect um, spot to, to pause and uh, everyone can continue okay. enjoying uh, that view in the background. And I will just remind folks okay. how they can find us if they have more questions later on and want to stay in touch. Um, you can find all of our recorded webinars on our website and under the education tab. 
Um, there's that's also the area where you can find kids science activities, which have uh, free PDFs to download. And some of them are fun, even for the young at heart. Um, if you like word searches and crossword puzzles and such. Um, this was a dolphin lesson. Uh, these yeah, are I'm going to sign off. OK, thank you, Sorry, Kathleen. I'm signing off. Bye, Bye Kathleen. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Bye. Um, so just to finish our wrap up um, and our thank you to Kathleen, uh, this was a dolphin lesson. So we hope that you've enjoyed it, whether you were listening live or to the recording. Um, it's generally the first and third Tuesdays of the month. And then our deep dives are a little bit more advanced. And those are generally the second and fourth Thursdays. Our next um, deep dive is Thursday, May 13th. And we're gonna be joined by a student who did some work using uh, whistles, recordings, to keep track of wild dolphins and estimate population size and things like that. So that's Thursday the 13th. And then if you haven't had enough, uh, you can tune into our podcast. Those episodes are free for download and you can access them at our website or wherever you get your podcasts. Um, and of course, we are a nonprofit. We are happy to provide these webinars for free. Um, but of course, we appreciate all of our supporters. And you can support us by doing things like adopting a dolphin from our Bimini study group. You can become a member, um, get a t-shirt, and you can join us in the field. Um, we are currently recruiting for a program in Bimini, the Bahamas, in early July 2021. Uh, so if you're, uh, if it's hasn't happened yet when you're listening to this, uh, check out our website and reach out to us if you're interested in signing up. And of course, stay in touch. You can see our website, our email, and all of our social media. So thank you again, everyone, for joining us. And uh, we look forward to the next Dolphin lesson. Have a great day, everyone.